Hello again to another example of the sine graph. Okay, so consider the following sine, uh, the following graph on the interval negative 195 to 255. And here you see they give us the graph and they ask us what is the equation for this function. Now, you should recognize or you could recognize that this is y is equal to sine x. This is a sine graph. But it might have been modified. As a matter of fact, it has been modified. Okay, so we have additional parameters that we need to find out what those values are. Okay, plus c. Now, in order to find that those parameters, we still do the same thing. First, we find the center. Okay, first we find the center. Here is the center. That center's coordinate is zero comma negative a half. Okay, now how did we use to find the center? We used to find the center by making this equal, this side equal to zero. So we said that P X minus B is equal to zero. And when we do so, we find that X is equal to zero. So we know that X is equal to zero as well. So we have P zero minus B is equal to zero. If I divide both sides with a P, okay, or oh, actually, let me rather say this. Either from this, we have got we've got two brackets. So either p is equal to zero, or negative b zero minus b is equal to zero. So b is equal to zero. So either p is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. Now notice that p cannot be zero. P is not allowed to be zero because um, we use p to find the period. Okay, p is used to find the period, and p is not allowed to be zero. It's also the coefficient of x. If p is 0, there's no coefficient for x. In other words, there's no x value. Then this is not a function. Okay, So we can conclude that b is 0. Now what did b represent? b represented the horizontal uh, shift. Did it shift left or right? Well, we can see the center hasn't shifted off from the y-axis. So from the very beginning you could have said, oh no, b is zero because this thing has not moved. Okay, so what do we know so far? So far we know that b is equal to zero. We don't know what p is. All we know about p is it cannot be zero. p cannot equal zero. Now that's the one portion of the um, center line. The next portion is that when this is zero, sine of zero gives me zero. So a times zero is zero plus C. So when, it, or when we make this input f uh, angle equal to zero, we find C, the center line. And the center line here we can see is negative one. So we can also see that the center line means that C was not negative one, negative a half. Okay, so let's fill out what we have so far. We have Y is equal to A sine there's no b, so x minus b in this bracket is not necessary. There's just an x, so there's no bracket nexus necessary. So we have p x minus a half. Okay, that's what we have so far. The second step that we did is we marked off the amplitude. Uh, sorry, not the amplitude, the period. The second part was to find the period. We marked off the period. The period, again, is how long does it take to complete one cycle. Now, don't mark it on the y-x-axis. We're working on the center line. So from negative 180 to positive 180, that distance is 360. So we have that 360 divided by positive p, okay, positive part of P is equal to and this gives us the answer or the period. Now we can see the period is 360 degrees. Now what that now means is that P must have been equal to 1. The absolute value of P. So that means P is either equal to 1 or P is equal to negative 1. Okay, so we can choose one of these two. Now we would we know that if p was equal to one, it would have gone like that. Okay, this would have been the shape. Okay, so the direction is, or this 
is one possible solution but because sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x my suggestion is just to always just go with the positive one we will get to direction in just a minute so let's just choose the positive one for now because both will still come out to the same answer okay so we get y is equal to a sine since p is positive one this just becomes sine x negative a half okay the final thing, uh, sorry, the third thing we did was to bound our graph to, to use the amplitude. Okay, and we found the amplitude by taking the absolute value of A. Absolute value of A means how high does it go above the center line. We can see here that's one, two, three units above the center line, which means my amplitude is three. Okay. In this case, A can therefore either be 3 or A can equal negative 3. Okay, so let's put that in. Okay, so since it's plus or minus, we're going to determine whether it's positive or negative in just a moment um, when we look at direction. Okay, so it's either plus or minus 3 sine x minus a half. Okay, now the last point that we did was to determine direction. And this is where I want us to, to only choose whether it's positive or negative. That's for sine. Okay, when we get to cos, it is going to be important to choose it here and here. Because you'll notice that with cos, there is a difference. Okay, but here there is no difference. So in this case, we can see it does have the negative shape because it's not going up um, in the direction that we read from the center point it would have been positive if we went up first but we are going down in this direction so it must be the negative one and therefore our final equation is y is equal to negative 3 sine x minus a half and that's it